The movie begins with the heroes embarking on a journey to space in 1963. Amid the escalating Cold War between the USA and the USR, nuclear war seems inevitable. To ensure humanity's survival, President John Kennedy initiates a secret plan. Scientists develop the spaceship Ascension and select 600 volunteers to colonize Proxima Centauri. The journey will take hundreds of years, with generations succeeding one another. Two generations later, the ship is primarily inhabited by the grandchildren of the original astronauts and the environment reflects the 1960s. In honor of the 51st anniversary of the launch, a grand party is held on the ship. Although it appears that the mission has been successful, social inequality persists. The wealthy live on the upper decks with good jobs, while the poor have limited comfort. One day, a young woman named Lai picks up a package from the butcher and goes to swim at the artificial beach. Soon after, a girl named Krista finds her lifeless body and alerts the ship with a scream. Despite the years that have passed, the chief engineer of the spaceship who remained on Earth is still alive. His son Harris now oversees the Ascension project, maintaining tight security. Learning of Lay's death, Harris's assistant suggests informing the project director, Catherine Warren. However, Harris fears this could jeopardize the project and tarnish his father's legacy. Meanwhile, Dr. Juliet Bryce examines Lay's body and finds strange marks on her. Captain William assigns the investigation to project executive director Aaron G. He discovers that there is no footage of Lai entering the beach. Aaron learns that Lai was seeing a man named James Toback who worked in water purification. However, he is unable to find James. The forensic results reveal that Lai had been intimate shortly before her death and that a bullet was extracted from her body. Alarmed, Aaron informs the captain as there are officially no weapons on board. Chris is hospitalized, traumatized by the incident, and insists that someone is watching her. She believes there is no life in space and that they must return to Earth. She is convinced that Lai died because she discovered something forbidden. Aaron eventually apprehends James Toback, who admits he saw Lai the day she died, but claims they had a quarrel and he was not with her when she died. Aaron and James go to the beach to search for clues and find a hidden passageway that explains Lai's absence on the surveillance footage. Aaron and Officer Duke inspect the passage and find the place where Lai was killed, along with a book containing maps of the water filtration system and blueprints of the navigation computer, which had recently malfunctioned. It becomes clear that this is an act of sabotage meant to force the ship to return to Earth. Duke and his men descend to the lower decks, where the butcher Stokes provokes a fight. Suddenly, an alarm sounds about an approaching radiation storm. The order is given for everyone to take shelter in their capsules, but the captain learns that the protective shields are jammed and sends Aaron and an electrician to fix them. Thanks to their efforts, the door finally closes. The electrician then reveals that he saw Stokes giving Lai a gun before she was killed. Meanwhile, Dr. Juliet puts Krista to bed and leaves her a seahorse-shaped necklace, claiming it will protect her. However, when the spaceship enters the radiation zone and everyone seals themselves in their capsules, Krista sees a strange man in a suit entering her room. After the ship safely passes through the radiation storm and everyone exits their capsules, G and Duke return to the lower deck, find a gun with Stokes, and take him into custody. Despite interrogation, Stokes insists he was framed because he is from the lower deck, making him an easy target. Meanwhile, the door to Stokes' cell automatically opens. He retrieves a hidden gun from his cabin. After the funeral, he speaks with Captain William, who admits he was close to lie, but did not kill her. Suddenly, Stokes appears, taking a random girl hostage and demanding a fair trial. He lunges at Stokes, freeing the girl, and the captain leads her to safety, while Stokes and G continue to fight. In the end, Stokes is ejected into space but lands on an inflatable mattress where a group of people detains him. It becomes clear that the entire project is a simulation testing the viability of generational spaceflight. However, the people on the ship believe they have been on a crucial mission for 51 years. Director Warren learns about the recent events and enraged storms into the Mission Control Center warning Harris not to hide anything. Harris claims Stokes is the murderer, but the director is not convinced and sends a consultant named Samantha Kruger to oversee the project. Simultaneously, an unknown man sets a bomb in the ship's cobalt generator, which later explodes. Harris and Kruger rush to the facility housing the spaceship. Fortunately, there are no casualties and the injured are taken to the medical center. Captain William inspects the explosion site and discovers graffiti, confirming it was a deliberate act. Fearing accusations of incompetence, he conceals the true cause. Kruger demands access to the ship's surveillance footage. He goes to the lower decks to meet Dwight, the person responsible for the generators, but Dwight panics and attacks him. Regaining consciousness, G continues the investigation and discovers that the explosion that killed his parents 20 years ago was similar to the recent one. He hypothesizes that Dwight was involved in Lay's murder because Stokes didn't know how to use a gun, 
and therefore couldn't have killed her. Harris and his assistant learn that one side of the deck is no longer airtight, allowing sounds from outside to be heard, creating a risk of exposure. He finds Dwight, and a fight ensues. Dwight escapes and starts a bomb timer. Alarmed, Harris orders everyone to evacuate the area immediately. She manages to defuse the bomb, but Dwight dies. Kruger blames Harris, who argues that the project's goal is to determine human capabilities. Later, Harris gives Dr. Julie's necklace to his wife, indicating that he was the one who broke into Krista's room and stole the necklace. Kruger begins her own investigation and discovers that several scientists involved in the Ascension project were found dead or went missing in the 1960s. Meanwhile, on the ship, everyone prepares for the next round of vaccinations, but Krista refuses the shot, convinced they want to kill her. The librarian volunteers to take the shot instead, but after receiving the medication, she loses consciousness. Kruger demands an explanation, but Harris insists these are routine immunizations and expresses concern for Krista, who didn't get the shot. He orders the medicine to be added to milk, but Krista figures out his plan and pours it out. Kruger meets with Eva, the author of a website tracking the fates of 1960s scientists. Eva claims the government used the project as a cover to abduct children for participation. Later, an unknown man pursues Krista and tries to forcibly vaccinate her. He injures himself, staining her dress with his blood, allowing her to escape. He takes her to Dr. Juliet and convinces her to get the shot. While preparing, Krista tells Dr. Robert Brace about visions she's had, including falling from a twin tower, a war in the desert, and tragedies in the ocean. She also claims to have seen Dr. Brace in the maintenance tunnel where Lai was killed. The doctor becomes enraged, gags her, and administers the shot. Harris and his assistant, who witnessed this, are shocked that Krista described events that actually happened on Earth. Dr. Bryce finds a blood sample from Krista's dress matching his wife's student, Mesmer, who is later found dead in his cabin. Kruger concludes that Harris has an accomplice on the ship causing disturbances and radiation storms. The day of the lottery arrives, allowing the winning couple to have a child, as population numbers must be strictly maintained. A new person can only appear after someone's death, and now three people have died. Officer Duke and his wife are among the winners. Krista notices a woman outside her cabin and follows her, realizing it's the ghost of Lai. Suddenly, a video of her treks with Captain William starts playing. Everyone in the room laughs while Krista screams uncontrollably. Harris observes this and notices that Krista reacted before the video played, as if she could see the future. He is amazed as his father predicted this phenomenon in three generations, calling it morphic resonance. Kruger steals the kitties to Stokes' cell, and later presents a report sharply criticizing Harris, prompting Director Warren to come to the project. Kruger sneaks into Stokes' cell, where he attacks her and takes her hostage. During this, he learns the truth about the Ascension Project, causing him a mental breakdown. However, Kruger persuades him that they must escape before they are noticed and killed. She is willing to help him because she believes the entire project is unethical. As they step outside, Stokes cries, but Kruger urges him to pull himself together. A guard approaches them, and they team up to neutralize him. In the process, Kruger gets injured and Stokes goes to the nearest store to buy medical supplies. They then go to a motel together. Warren and Harris learn about the escape and call security from the company TC, which turns out to have funded the project. The management is unhappy with the director's work and accuses Harris of covering up facts. Harris panics and begs Warren for a second chance, but it is in vain. On the ship, Duke learns that she has started investigating his wife, suspecting her of killing Lai. He loses his temper and confronts G. At the same time, Krista has another vision. She foresees a violent fight between Duke and G and runs to the beach, anxious. Unintentionally, she uses telekinesis but loses control of her power, shutting down all the ship's electricity. Warren blames Harris for the incident and orders her henchmen to get rid of him. Terrified, Harris talks about morphic resonance, revealing that Warren has long awaited this result. They rush to the control center and learn that all the ship systems shut down due to a power failure, but the artificial stars still shine. Harris's father embedded the star lights in the ship's nuclear reactor to ensure the illusion's eternity. Harris suggests using the nuclear reactor to restore the system's functionality. Meanwhile, Toback receives a weak TV signal and informs Dr. Bryce. However, Bryce sends him away under a flimsy pretext and then turns off the screen, revealing that he is Harris' accomplice. Kruger meets with Eva and explains everything to her. She plans to flee abroad and seek asylum before exposing the project's deceit. Eva tries to dissuade her, and Kruger realizes that the journalist also works for the TC company. Eva confesses everything and shoots Kruger. Stokes manages to escape. The oxygen on the ship begins to run out. Captain William and G go to the lower decks to activate the carbon dioxide scrubbers and declare a radiation storm for the others to conserve oxygen. 
Harris concludes that the chances of getting the ship back to working condition are extremely low, so Warren decides to extract Krista before she suffocates. William and Drew realize the scrubbers are beyond repair, so they decide to clean the air manually. Krista senses someone coming to take her. Dr. Brace confirms this, and when Krista accuses him of killing Lag, he confesses. Lai had learned about the fake mission, and he couldn't allow the exposure. William and G successfully distribute lithium dioxide throughout the ship using large fans, restoring oxygen levels. At that moment, Warren's envoy arrives and Dr. Brace tries to stop him, but the brute easily brushes him aside and grabs Krista. He sees Lay's ghost who leads him to Krista, revealing that he has also developed resonance. He attacks the thug, and Krista uses her power again, making their opponents dissolve into thin air. Seeing all this, Warren panics and tries to contact the envoy by radio. She moves closer to the ship, and Harris takes advantage of the moment to push her down, killing her. He finds himself on an unknown planet. The concept is intriguing, especially for fans of detective fiction, prompting the question, what if Earth is also a spaceship and all the people on the planet are participants in an experiment? Make sure to subscribe for more recaps like this.